Today's guest was uh, Dave Kilby from Natural Aptitude, which is a company that has developed a lot of apps and supported a lot of crowdsourcing projects in the field of um, biodiversity. That's I mean. right, yeah. Okay. Only, yeah. So, um, what are the main challenges in setting up a crowdsourcing data project? Uh, for, for, for us, I mean, because we're focusing um, on quite wide ranging uh, segments of the, the community, um, really you've got to make these projects accessible to everyone. So one of the key focuses that we have is around how do you design a project that will enable anyone really to interact with it and submit data that's good quality. So we spend quite a lot of effort and time looking at how you can extract the sort of highest quality data from people that don't necessarily know a subject area. So a lot of that is done by the design of the software and how you lay it out and the questions that you ask. Um, and also with smartphone apps, uh, we make it very easy for people to uh, collect data, which is uh, principally geospatial because we're using the um, using a GPS yeah. sensor on the phone uh, and we also ask for images of most of the data um, subjects to be submitted so that they can be verified as well. How, how do you engage the audience or the, the data collectors? Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult one. Um, we, uh, we generally sort of try and um, weave a story around um, the, the project. Um, and because the projects are being done for clients such as the Environment Agency, um, other agencies, Scottish Environment Protection Agency, etc., uh, Butterfly Conservation, they do quite a lot of the sort of initial PR work on it. Um, so they have an audience themselves. So we tend to try and start from uh, a perspective of trying to engage uh, an audience which is already interested in that subject and then hope that it, it, it snowballs from there and we, we encourage more and more people to get involved when they see the benefit and um, that they can find out more about, for example, butterflies mm -hmm. because the apps have things like field guides built into them. So they're great for people out in the field to actually make identifications. You don't have to submit a record. And have you learned any lessons about how to engage with the media, how the media can help or hinder a project? I think we've, yeah, we've learned quite a lot along the way. Um, there have been some interesting examples where we've had sort of uh, mass media coverage of projects mm -hmm. um, and the, the sort of more wide ranging, larger uh, media coverage. For example, um, we've had celebrities retweeting things, um, and we've had coverage in The Times, The Guardian, that sort of thing, and been on the one show. You tend to get the spike in audience partic mm -hmm. participation, and it's not always the the right target audience for that particular project but let's say five percent of that that initial spike remains interested in the project that's a great thing so um, it's generally a very positive experience but you do also get the uh, the problem whereby people try and submit spurious data or information just because they're playing around with the phone app um, generally it's you know you don't get anything malicious happening but it's uh, more a case that you've just got to weed out the you know the chaff so and how, how, how do you, how do projects manage to engage the potential users and the audience at the end of the project or, or as it's been going on for a long time? How do you maintain that engagement? Ma maintaining it is, is critical um, and we do that largely by trying to communicate with them with newsletters, uh, Facebook, social media, Twitter, um, just to let them know the project's still alive and kicking is, a, is an important thing. Uh, we also have websites that sit alongside the smartphone apps which surface the information that's been collected so people can always use that as a, a portal into the data. But it's largely by um, just sort of graft, you know, you have to keep up the, the communication channels with people uh, and we tend to find that direct newsletters every now and again uh, and social media are very good ways of maintaining that connection with people. Yeah, and do projects do that? The projects tend to be quite bad or the sponsors of the projects tend to be a bit sort of reluctant to engage in that because quite often they're big organisations which have project funding and when that project funding is run out the interest tends to sort of wane slightly or people move posts. Um, but we have a core um, audience basically involved with these projects mm -hmm. and they often take on the responsibility of maintaining 
okay. the, the life of the project. So they, they almost begin to kind of become, um, they, they, they have a life of their own in essence and the community then starts to own the project. Yeah. So there's uh, some lessons maybe, maybe funders should, should think of it longer term, but at the same time, the, if you've got a successful community, then it's going to be self-sustaining to a certain extent. To a certain extent, yeah. yeah, and we tend to try and encourage that for the community to own the project uh, in, in, in to whatever you know, ever extent we can encourage yeah. that, the better, really. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks very much for coming. No worries. And, uh, thanks for being Thank you. Cheers.